Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I'm Stalosa, and today we're going to take a look at The Order 1886. Now, I'm sure most people will be expecting me to rip this game apart. We all know the game's short. We all know the game runs at 30 FPS for cinematic reasons. We all know it's not 1080p. Instead, it clocks in at 920 by 800 Anyway, enough blabber. Let's get stuck into this. First up, let's get the negatives out of the way. There's too many QTEs. These are quick time events. The Order 1886 wins the award for the most QTEs in any game ever I've ever played. Ever, ever, ever. You know, I'm of the opinion that QTEs, they can be acceptable when they're used for certain things, such as moving a hand crank or operating a valve or something like that, but they need to be used sparingly. You cannot use them all the time for everything. Instead, the order, oh my god, it's bloody flowing, absolutely flowing, overflowing even, with QTEs everywhere. And QTEs are a very poor gameplay mechanic. They're overused, guys. They're really overused here, and it makes the gameplay feel awfully cheap. You know, if you want to go into combat with something, or you want to have a big kind of... Well, I mean, all I'm going to say is this. QTE boss battles are a terrible end to a game. I'm looking at you, Space Marine. I'm also looking at you, The Order 1886. You pick up audio recordings throughout the levels. Now, you're forced to listen to these while you're in the pause menu. That's crap, and it's absolutely lazy as well. Why can't you listen to these as you're carrying on with the game? It would make sense, you know, as you're walking around navigating the area, you can listen to this voice recording or whatever the hell kind of recording it is that you've picked up. But no, you're forced to come out of the game and stare at the menu screen while you listen to this thing. And actually, you can read it faster because you get the, the letter on the screen, well, like the transcript of whatever the hell you listen to, and you can read through that faster than you can actually listen to it. And it's annoying and it's like, what is the point? Why can you not just listen to this as you are playing the game? That really annoyed me. Taking control away from the player is never a good thing either. The Order 1886 does this all the bloody time. And at times when you least expect it, you know, you'll just be walking along, everything's all nice and fine. Then suddenly, oh no, it takes control to walk you up a ladder. Now, you just need to press forward on the left analog stick. You, you would go up the ladder, but the game takes control and walks you up the ladder for no reason. It's like, why? It's, it's weird. Also, you can only climb as well when it when it decides you can climb. And you can only run when it decides to let you run, which again is really annoying because there's points in the game where you're walking through an area and you just want to run through the area, but you're forced to walk through the area. And I think this is because the devs, they want you to see, oh, this beautiful world they've crafted. Look at this. Look how fantastic this is, where the gamer's main priority at that point is to just get through that area and get to the next bit. You know, if it's a, a some sort of corridor, which is, joining a couple of rooms together. You just want to run through the corridor as quick as possible, get to the objective, but you're forced to walk at a really slow rate, and it's kind of... That, well, it's not kind of. That's It's very annoying. It's also got a very bland and boring and absolutely pointless lockpicking mechanic. In fact, I don't even know why this is in the game, because at no point are you forced to actually speed unlock a door. It's not like, oh my god, you must unlock this door before somebody gets you and kills you or anything like that. It's like, here is a door. Unlock the door. You get through the door, and then it's like, what was the point of that door being locked? I may as well have just been able to open it. It adds nothing to the game. In fact, all it does is put an artificial barrier in your face, which you need to go through, because, hey, we've got a lockpicking mechanic. And also, similarly, there is a mechanic where you can do the same thing to electrical locks or electrical systems. It's slightly different, but it's the same kind of thing, like a little mini game that you've got going. And again, it's pointless, because at no point are you actually rushed into completing these things it's just like oh you must now use the electric thing or you must now use the lockpick to get through this area it's really annoying it's a cover based third person shooter with mechanics that you'd be happy with back in maybe 2006 2005 uh it brings absolutely nothing new to the table and you know it's really disappointing in that regard as well because it seems like the devs have just completely ignored gameplay as a method of, talk, of of storytelling and for a game which is supposed to be this big thing about it's you know it's a it's almost filmic i think the, word, the, the very phrase i've seen being used so it's, it's kind of like a uh, a cinematic experience that you're going through it's well, why have they just neglected to use gameplay you know they've just shoved in a load of old gameplay i i, I want to say tried and tested but at this point they're, they're tried tested and, and boring and need evolving and and they haven't been here it's just a very simple third-person cover-based shooter, and, and that is it. Oh yeah, and the uh, the game is made up of over two hours of cutscenes, which is rather a lot when you consider the game comes in at around about six hours. Now, the reason why I say it comes in around about six hours length, I played the game on normal difficulty, and it took me, I think, around about five hours and 45 minutes to complete. Um, 
I threw six hours in just in case. I'm not the most competent console gamer. You know, I'm not the best with using the controller to aim. I'm a PC gamer primarily. So I, things like that are kind of alien to me. But if even I can complete it in that speed, anybody who's competent console gamer, especially an FPS gamer, they, you know, they'll be, they'll be able to blast through it much faster than me, I would imagine. So it is short and that, that is a problem. But let's get on to the positives because there are quite a few positives. And I think... I maybe the positives outweigh the negatives, although that's going to come down to personal opinion. But do allow me to put forward some evidence. This is the best looking console game I've ever played. And I mean that. It is, the, it is just the best, hands down, the best console game I've ever played visually. If this was running at 60 FPS and it was 1080p uh, and, it, and it looked like it did, I, I would be losing my mind. I would absolutely lose my shit over this. I'd be like, oh, holy hell, this is the best thing I've ever seen ever. The game really does look that good, you see, guys. But of course, it's not 1080p and it's not 60 FPS. It's 1920 by 800 and it's 30 FPS. Although it does hold 30 FPS pretty consistently. It doesn't really drop down, even with large fights going on. It does a little bit, but it's not really that much. But even so, the visual design is its fantastic. The polish. There is so much polish in this game. its It really is mind-blowing. At no point did I see clipping on Galahad. The weapons feel meaty as hell when fired. And they've really got a boom, boom to them. They look really good as well. Like, even the models of the weapons look good. Everything looks good. Like, basically everything looks good in the game. The explosions, the effects, all of it looks fantastic. The lip syncing, it's spot on. The character faces have got insane levels of detail. I mean, insane. It just looks fantastic. The world and environment design is, you know, it's second to none. But that's in the visual sense. The way Galahad moves around cover to fire. Again, fantastic. Slick. I'm running out of superlatives to say. It, it, it really is. It's so well made. It's really, really well made. I found myself wanting to explore this fantastic reimagining of late 19th century steampunk London. But uh, it's a bit of a shame then that the game's so short and it constantly keeps you in smaller areas. And, and it's not even for, you know, like, it's, it's not like, oh, you're in a smaller area because it would crush the, the, the performance. It's the areas are, are often back alleys and things like that in London. So, you know, really tight areas, but they're just so short, you know, they don't last long enough. The, it's a problem with the game, it's just too short. You know what, screw it, I'll admit this. The Order 1886, it's the best looking game I've played so far this year, across all platforms. If you appreciate the finest graphics, you will really be astounded at what Ready at Dawn have managed to achieve with the PS4's, quite frankly, outdated hardware by today's standards. It really is impressive. You know, and I think the story's not that bad either. It's got a few twists here and there. I'm not going to spoil it, but I, I definitely do think the game's worth playing for the story. You know, I found myself wanting to keep playing. I didn't really want to take a break. You know, I just wanted to keep going. You know, when you get that feeling where you become so engrossed in the game, it's like, I need to know what happens. What is this? What could the, you know, what, what, what's this? What's that? I need to play to get through to this point. I felt myself having that. And I, I, I would have loved it if the game was 20 hours long and kept giving me that for 20 hours. I, if it was 20 hours long... You know, I'd be recommending the game to everybody. I'd say this is the, buy this game, even though it's got like fairly crappy gameplay mechanics. Just for the experience alone, I'd be saying buy it. But because it's so short, ugh, ugh, I get a little bit. Ugh. It's it's sort of it got me hooked, and then it ended, and I was like, well, that's yeah. I mean, the fact is, it's got an over reliance on using cutscenes to tell the story, which at times make it feel like a semi interactive movie than a game. Which, I know that's what the devs were going for, but you, you still have to remember, this is a game. You know, you ne it needs to be playable. It needs to be enjoyable when the player gets control. And it doesn't need to be obnoxious and take control off the player whenever it feels like, which is what it does. And that is frustrating. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, the game is... I think it's got, it's got rather an arrogant air about itself. It's as if it knows best. You end up feeling not like a player, which is a bit of a problem because it's a game. You feel more like an observer. It's almost like you're watching a replay of a game. It's, it's weird. You sort of relish the moments the game actually gives you control, only to then get rather agitated when it inexplicably takes control back. As I said in the example I give where you're walking up a ladder and then suddenly you're no longer... You, have, you don't have control. The game's decided to take control as you move up the ladder and it's, it's, it, it's annoying. It's like, what? Why? It feels like a tech demo. A very impressive tech demo, but it's still a tech demo nonetheless. It feels like the PlayStation 4's Rise. That's what it feels like. Albeit a lot better than Rise, because Rise was... I mean, Rise had really poor gameplay mechanics. The Order 1886, it's a much better game than, than Rise. It's way better visually, which is, you know, quite a statement, because Rise did look fairly good. But obviously, we all know the PS4 is a more powerful platform than the, the Xbox One. 
Oh, and uh, it's absolutely got no replayability at all. Uh, there's no player choice which can impact on the story. Um, there's, there's, there is literally no incentive to play again. Once you've been through the game, that's it. It will be the same experience again. I mean, the only thing you could really do if you were really pushing for it would be maybe force yourself to use different weapons or maybe try and find all of the little audio collectibles, but, like, it's nothing different. There is no choice. It, the game is what it is, and that is it. Once you've played through it, that's, you'll just want to offload the game. You'll want to sell the game. It is of no use to you, then. You know, I feel like they've missed a trick, because they could have really been onto something like the next Uncharted or the next Last of Us type series. It, it really does look that good. You know, it looks it's so polished. It feels... It feels way and above AAA in terms of polish, in terms of just the way it looks and, and all of that stuff, the way it plays. So, like, the controls are all very snappy and stuff like that. The biggest problem is the gameplay mechanics are just so poor. And it really does... It, it's not forgettable. I don't want to say it's a forgettable experience. I enjoyed it, and... Well, I've enjoyed it, but I just... I, I will not... <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I'm, I say it's not a forgettable experience, but I've enjoyed it. But I do think I'll forget about it in a few months' time because it didn't have enough to keep me coming back or to keep me totally engrossed. Yet the five, five and a half, five hours and, and three quarters I spent with the game were really enjoyable just to go through the story. But every time it gave me control of the character, it did feel like I was playing a game from 10 years ago. It just felt like a standard third person shooter with nothing fancy. I just feel like if they'd spent as much time building a great gameplay experience as they've spent building the world, which is absolutely fantastic, they would have a series which would rival something like Uncharted or even The Last of Us on console. But what they do have is a world which is utterly fantastic. And you know what? I really hope The Order 1887 comes out. But you know what I want to see? Because they've got no excuse now. They've literally built the engine. They've, they've built everything that needs to be built. They've built all the characters. They've, they've built all the art assets. I want to see gameplay improvements, okay? I mean, my God, do they need to work on gameplay improvements. If they, if they give me something, if they introduce a load of other systems, if they really bring the gameplay mechanics into this, into this bloody decade, it would be such a great game. And that's what I'm looking forward to. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But as I say, guys, The Order 1886 is, is by far the most impressive console game I've played. But that's visually, guys, not gameplay-wise. All right, guys, let me start over here. And this is Unit Lost. And this has been a bit of a chat about The Order 1886 and why I think it's... I do think it is worth playing. I don't think I can recommend it at full price, but I would definitely check this out if uh, you can somehow get hold of it during a sale or maybe even pick up a second-hand copy because it is, it is an experience and it is worth playing through. If nothing else, just to see the absolute visual prowess on show. It is such a fantastic-looking game. Okay, guys. I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.